Today is July 15th. It is now 10.01. Um, call to order. Mr. Eldon Callen. Here. Mr. Ed Hawkins. Here. And Mr. Tom Blooms here. At this time, we'll realize for a moment of silent meditation and pledge to the flag and also consider our thoughts and prayers with those individuals in the flooding down in the southern part of the state. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, consent and approvals from our county administrator. Okay, we have 14 exonerations, $14,468.17 for tax year 2015, and there are also corrections on existing tickets. Fiduciary orders as of July 15, and the second quarterly report of Fiduciary Commissioner Armistead. Minutes of July 1 and July 8, vouchers, General County Fund, 543,973.72. General County Fund purchasing card, 25,759.76. Cole Severance Fund, 18,767.24. Camp Muffley, $22,020.49. Camp Muffley purchasing card, 971.25. Chestnut Ridge Park, 3,213.80. Chestnut Ridge Park purchasing card, 560.16. Mason Dixon Park, 115.39. Mason Dixon Park purchasing card, 169.19. Assessor's Valuation Fund, 4,490.35. Assessor's Valuation Purchasing Card, 1,835.43. Magistrate Court Fund, 278.12. 911 purchasing card 20217. 911 cash 1717.09. Morgantown Industrial TIF 4727.49. For a total of $628,801.65. And that's a pleasure. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Okay. Comments from the public. If we have anyone who'd like to get up and speak, please stand up. Rate and give your name and address and we'll go from there. Anyone who wants to? I was just fixing to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I got to this early today. I, I know, I'm glad you finally awoke. So yeah, <laughs> again, I guess things are going so well. I, I'm glad to see that there isn't anyone. I think it's a lot has to do also because of West TV and showing our film so people are able to see everything. We do have Tangerine Sally to introduce the new employee. Okay. We'll do that next. Okay, I'll close it. Uh, since there is no public comment, we will go from there. Um, at this time, we have uh, a new employee, um, Tammy Ren Renzelli from CASA, uh, has something to tell us and introduce us. Good morning, Mr. Glenn. Good morning. Good morning, County Commissioners, Mr. Glenn. I'm Tammy Renzelli with CASA from Kansas County and also Preston County. I'm here this morning to um, introduce Joe Mooney, who um, we would like to um, present as our new volunteer coordinator for Preston County and have her approved. Um, she will be serving Preston County. Um, we are funded through United Way and also um, the County Commission. Um, I spoke briefly this morning with Mr. Bloom um, to discuss the possibilities of having the County Commission and Mr. Bloom help um, spread the word of our mission um, here in Morgantown and Preston County. Um, to get the PR out about our mission and what we need to do um, to enhance our volunteer recruitment for CASA. And uh, Mr. Boone and I have decided that we will sit down in the near future and see what we can do to um, involve Morgantown a little bit more in the entire Morgantown, Montegaya area. Well, good. So, well, f well, first, let's have a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Joan, welcome. Thank and the you. second part is when I sit down, if it's all right with the commission, then I would come back to you all and see what ideas we've come up with. But I think all three of us realize the importance of CASA and with the school year beginning, I believe we need, I, I believe people just do not understand it and what you all do and we really need you and the service you provide for not only Mon County but Preston County. So I, I think, you know, any suggestions would be more than willing to take, but we'll meet probably in the next week or two right. and do that, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also, Tammy also pointed out that I was the guidance counselor of her a couple years ago. <laughs> a couple years ago. So, congratulations. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, Renetta will now tell us about all the thousands and millions of dollars of grants we're going to get. Such expectations. <laughs> we just have some reimbursement requests for you today. Okay. Um, we have the, uh, for the Governor's Highway Safety Program, uh, alcohol transfer funds, the amount of $3,469, um, I'm sorry, 4000 Try again. Okay. $3,400. Dollars and sixty nine cents. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also have the DUI grant, also for the month of June two thousand fifteen, sixteen ninety two fifty nine. Mm -hmm. And then we have some items um, that are also related to the Governor's Highway Safety Program. Uh, items of um, of no activity for the month of June. Click at our ticket. Distracted driving. Safe communities and traffic safety data. Okay, and how is... I've got, I've got more. Oh, you got more? Wow, that's so good. Uh, day report center for the month of June, $17,507.90. And the, uh, to close out the emergency solutions grant, uh, we have a, a one remaining request for connecting link, $5,756.81 for the month of June. That's all I have. Okay. We have to approve the reimbursements. Second. And properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. I had a blue pen? Yes. Yes. Okay. At this time, we have Captain Mark Ralston, who is going to talk with us about some modifications in the tow policy. I apologize, we will look. I don't see. You can be married. Do you have Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get started. Oh, sorry. Yes, go ahead. I am sorry. <coughs> um, the the letter that Tammy sent to the commission at the end of last week, um, what this is is for is just to let the commission know that all the inspections have been conducted to the to the towing agencies that wish to be on the county commission's list. Um, that first paragraph and the ones that those companies listed they were approved and met the Commission's policy um, for inclusion on the rotation list there are four in the second paragraph Morgantown towing University towing Westover towing and midnight towing that um, they were actually second companies that did not meet the requirements of the Commission's policy um, and didn't actually have a separate standalone business. And they pretty much opted to not be included on that list as opposed to trying to come up with the separate facilities right. in order to do that. Okay. Um, the inspections went well. Um, I would also like the commission to know that Tammy did all the legwork for this, prepared the policy. Not surprising, Mark. <laughs> and she's and, good. And <laughs> did a very nice job with this. Um, we now have updated driver's information, updated um, business licenses, insurance information, and vehicles for everybody on the list, which is probably a first. Um, so we are more, more current now than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. um, so with the commission's approval, we'd like to put this into effect. Um, the only one on this list I haven't heard of was McDaniels. McDaniels? Yeah. They're on Grafton. Grafton Road. Right? Yeah. And they've been uh, around for a while. Yeah, I guess. Yes. Never heard of them. <laughs> yes. Both. It's a small operation. But Glad I haven't had to yeah. use them. Because all the, all the rest of them I'm familiar with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you want us to approve this, this list uh, as being acceptable for the countywide rotation? Yes. Okay, I would move that we approve the list submitted and uh, recognize the good work that Captain Ralston, uh, Tammy, and uh, the Sheriff's Department has done. Second. 
It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Thank, thank you. you. Good. This will go in effect. And thank you very much. I think this will resolve some of the major issues. And then if there's some yeah, other problems, I mean, it's, come it's, back. It's, it's yeah, let's see how it works. It's, it's like yes. anything uh, when you're dealing with a, a, a lot of different people and a lot right. of different issues, there is no quick, short answer. And yes. it's taken us a while, but we worked at it deliberately. Tammy, uh, Tammy Waite and Mark Ralston's been in the forefront of this, and uh, we've worked, we've had a number of meetings on it and worked out nicely. Yeah, and I please pass on that we're appreciative of the towing companies that were willing to work with us, right. come yeah, up with the solution, company. and I think they're supposed to be commended too because they also helped with us resolving this issue. Yeah, Mike is, uh, Mike Wolf is mm -hmm. aware that we were coming today, and once, um, once everything was approved, is ready to put this into motion. So. Great. This is Fanta. More good news. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. I will hold off on Tom Amon, considering that he's not here. Except and I will hold off. From oh, okay, go ahead. oh, I apologize. Yeah. <coughs> Except. Oh, that's perfect, Tom. Yeah, I didn't even see it. Thank you. Except proposals from appraisers. Actually, we only have one. Except proposal from appraiser. <laughs> and this is from Chico Appraisal Services for Cabin Road. Okay. This is just the qualifications that you'll look at, decide if you want yep. to go with them or re-advertise. But this was in the paper Here twice. Me, I did the last one. Go ahead. I'll open it and then we can move on. <laughs> yeah, that's I'll fine with me. <laughs> We've tried twice. <clears throat> this is, must be good. Better than us. Those need to go that way. That's why I separated it. These are about. Oh, Lord. There is no price included in that. Right. That's just qualifications. Okay, they got the letter of interest, statement of the four buildings, references, the curriculum vitae. They don't want make a second copy of the same thing. So uh, they made four. There's multiple. Right. There are multiple copies of uh, the four things. Let's see if there's something else. Uh, yeah, there's just mul mul multiple copies of the same thing I just read off, which is, is complete. They have both references, letter of interest, references, and their uh, background and experience. So. Uh, I don't know if there's anything that needs to be analyzed here by anyone. Do you? Do you or, do you no. or Bobby you see any reason to analyze no. this? They were, uh, it was advertised twice, and we actually sent notices to all of the local appraisers uh, in the in the area, including Marion County. I would, I would move that we accept uh, Chico Appraisal Services for this project. Second. Can properly move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It passes. Okay, sorry about that. Again, we're still a little early, so if we could go to correspondence. Letter from State Tax Department regarding TIF funds. This is from Aura Ash, uh, stating they've received the revised certificate of value from the assessor's office. The changes resulted in an increase in your tax increment financing values. These changes will increase the amount of funding going toward your TIF and reduce the amount available for allocation in your general fund. We have calculated this decrease in your general fund budget to $15,773. And he's suggesting this adjustment be made when we do our first budget revisions for 2015-16. Uh, okay. Reduce the general fund by that much. 15000 Okay. We can do this when we have the carryovers, which should be 
Um, they need to be into state by the end of July. So our next, I think our last meeting might be the 27th or the 29th. Uh, July 24th. 29th. No, 29th. excuse me, 29th. 29th. Okay. 29th, yeah. Okay, so we'll do that on the 29th. A uh, letter from Star City Mayor and Council regarding the Star City TIF, which we have requested that letter. Yes, this is the mayor we sent last week. We um, discussed the TIF and the uh, regulations, what they needed to do to proceed in the proper manner. Ask him to put that in a letter, which he did, and it's been signed by the mayor and council members. Okay. I, go ahead. So I was just going to say he addressed all our concerns, yes. Yes. and uh, therefore <coughs> I move we to approve the uh, uh, the bid and the project. Second. Jim Poplar moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And if you just call him, just tell him thank you very much for doing that. I think it just resolves. It just clarifies an issue, so it's Straight on record. Straight down the issue, so it is, isn't done again. Didn't so we're not in court. <laughs> didn't become a problem. <laughs> anyway. That's right. Um, do you have any other correspondence? Uh, I did receive, um, this was hand delivered by Mr. Chuck Sell on Monday. It's a petition um, asking for the removal of um, executors in an estate that's been open since, I believe, 2008. Um, this shouldn't have been delivered here. That, it should have been taken to, to the, the clerk clerks. first. Yes, yeah. to be properly processed. So, so just on record, we're saying that we're all in agreement. We'll just send it to the county clerk. We can just transfer it to the county clerk and wait, await their recommendation. Any other okay. correspondence? No. Okay. I did want to say some positive. In the parade magazine on July 5th, 2015, someone sent this to me from Pittsburgh, and it's called Ballparks We Love. Old stadiums getting new life, and one they mention is Montague County Ballpark, Granville, West Virginia Black Bears. All the minor leagues unveiled the new parks and the, and the nicest and best parks. So it's a nice little plug about us and our park. And I thought that was great to see that in a national magazine. Okay, unfinished business. Does anyone have any unfinished business? I have a couple issues I'd like to bring up that I... Um, I was not here when I heard that there was discussion about the uh, plan for moving, um, moving into the new building. And I guess one of the questions that I got a little <coughs> confused was, I believe that the county clerk, was it, came up, Gene Frim? Circuit clerk. Circuit clerk. Circuit clerk. Circuit clerk came up and mentioned some ideas of what she would like to do about how to do the process. And I guess... My question is and now that I see the sheriff here, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I have some questions or concerns of procedure of how does funding work? Does it regular? Is it overtime? And also, what is the possibility? Well, let me ask that first. Can that one department do it over another department? That was the first question I wanted, wanted to know. How does that work? Yes, I, and I did talk to Tanya in payroll because I knew we were going to yeah. discuss this. I had some questions as well about how it was going to work. She said it would be no problem, that yes, they could be paid through Gene's budget. It would be at an overtime rate, and any benefits associated with how many hours they work and what they get paid for doing those duties that she would like for them to do, then that also would come out of her budget. So what she needs to know is that whatever she pays in overtime for those three uh, employees to help her in her office, if that remains the plan, then she also has to know there's benefits that will have to be paid out of the budget to, to them. It's simply, the way Tony explained it to me, it's simply uh, uh, keying it in correctly so right. that we make sure that that uh, amount of money comes out of her budget. One of the questions I was wondering about is uh, cost-wise, first of all, I'm, I, and again, I wasn't there, so I don't know. I, I just have a concern that I don't want to make this an open-ended check to allow departments, and again, you know, to uh, move into, you know, just how we're going to pay for this. One of the questions, and again, that's such a big department and only three people, that, that's a lot to put on three people, and also what would be the possibility <coughs> of using the part-time where you could have the part-time and not pay the overtime people, and, that, and you would have a lot more staff. That's one of the ideas I wanted to throw out. And the other one to the county commissioners, what I'd like to throw out is, as you know, the three of us 
since I guess January, have asked for a plan of how this move was going to take place. I would like to see a plan within the next week of how this is going to be done and also the cost factor. And if it's going to cost us, you know, anything that we're going to need to do. My question and concern is we've not gotten anything back. Is that correct about several requests we have sent letters about plans from each uh, office of how they were moving? Yeah. And my concern is we're looking in the next, it's moving very quickly. And I would like to see how they were planning to do it and see what they were planning to do during the sc school time, <laughs> during the, the work time and also off time. And we have requested that before, and I was wondering what the other commissioners felt about an actual plan and a cost factor. And I'd like to just discuss that. I'm throwing it out as a, an idea because we've not heard from them, and I believe we need it to know quickly. Well, it wasn't in writing, but in all fairness to yep. uh, uh, Madam Clerk uh, Jean Friend, she sort of outlined a plan for us, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that is that she's got to clean up the boxes here and uh, go through go through them, figure out what needs to go down, and then take those first. At that meeting, it mm -hmm. was pending another meeting about the filings. That's my recollection of it. Yes. If Ed has a different one, yep, I'll that's correct. So uh, the the issue was, mm -hmm. how do you take all these files and filing cabinets and box them up, and what do you do with them uh, to then move the filing cabinet? So I think the answer was. Go ahead, Bobby. You have the answer. I would. We paid one hundred and twenty thousand dollars to have the files put down there, so they could move their files. We don't have to move no file cabinets. Okay, so that was the, that was okay. what we were waiting. What great? It was all pending on. Uh, in terms of having a cap, and I'm just addressing the circuit clerk. Uh, yeah. We haven't got any information from any of the others. In terms of having a cap, my understanding was that she would operate and pay this out of her budget mm -hmm. until a point where it exceeds her budget, and then she would come up and justify the increase. I want, I want to emphasize, and, and I understand that, that it's good to have a plan and have a number, <coughs> but the, not, the cap to me is what's in her budget. Yes. And then we figure out another cap based on what's left after she she gets the first part done. Uh, uh, Jean, Jean is a very frugal person. I'm not the <laughs> least bit concerned about her uh, running up a, a huge tab. Uh, that that, and I still understand your your request for a cap, but I think that we believed. And, and Ed, you, you can speak for yourself, but I, I, I believe that Ed and I believed in that discussion that the first step was to figure out how much it's going to cost and what she can get done out of her own budget. Then she'd come back and say, well, I need this number of dollars, and that would create the cap. That's the way I understood it, Ed. Yes, that's correct. My only question is that um, I understand that. And it isn't just her department, because it's, it's right. several, I was just several it's, departments it's, moving. It's the largest department. Yeah, yeah, it's several departments. And my question is, if we had a plan, I, I, I believe it would be advantageous for us to have an idea of, you know, when this is going to be done. I mean, I guess, say if you have eight workers, are six going to be working and two are going to be... Bought? No, I, I agree with that yeah. with the rest of the departments. I wanted okay. to be fair to... to yes. To Madam Clerk friend. Okay. That's who I wanted to be fair with. Sure. Because she did come up here with a plan. She did talk about what she's going to do. She has figured out. Maybe she hasn't submitted a, a formal written document. But I'm not a big one that you write everything down. Uh, some people are. I'm not. I mean, I felt she had a plan and okay. a direction. Now, as per the other departments, mm -hmm. I agree with you entirely. I'm, I'm Right, I'm totally. There. So, how it do would, we want to? So, well, it would be helpful to redirect a request that would be to great. the other departments and say, "We know that we have made, suffered some delay, but a move is inevitable, and right. a plan to have a move should be pursued." Yeah. Okay, that, and that's why I think all I'm trying to get across that we make sure that you know, right. well, we I know, because I'm just concerned we wait till the last minute and and we find out that you know we're not able to move. Um, I just didn't want. Uh, 
No, I didn't mean Jane, to take I all didn't of want, her. I didn't want Jane to feel that, that like yeah. somehow <clears throat> she was being targeted for not doing everything. Correct. Because, because I think she did. Right. Okay. Well, that's why I was trying. So then basically we're in a general agreement that just reissue a letter saying that we just like a general concept and idea and plan of in the next week of how they are planning to from now until when the, the move-in date is, which is, appears to be at the end of September, what their plan is so we can get this going. And do they need to coordinate anything with O.J. White, or how is that going to work? Okay, so coordinate through uh, we, we need to also put in this letter, which is, sure. which is a good point, which, and that is that uh, are, are, will the cost – Will they be able to cover the cost right. of this move within their own budget, or are they looking for additional funds? They need to let us know now up front. Yes, sure. If, if, they, if they don't let us know now up front, we're going to assume they're going to do it in their own budget and they're not getting any more money. Correct. Good job. Just uh, an avenue I thought of, but, and I don't know if it's been pursued yet. Maybe it has, and the answer is no. But I know since the Supreme Court dictates a lot That's to really the circuit court, circuit court's Excellent. office of business hours and things like that. Is there money maybe available through the Supreme Court that would help <laughs> offset some of the expenses of the move for at least those offices? Uh, that That's something that ceilings is supposed to be working on on a continual basis, getting any money we can. Bobby, do you know if there's any actual move money from the Supreme Court? Money to, to help pay to, to help pay in the well, move. We are we're going to get reimbursed on down the road for some stuff that was put in this building from the Supreme Court, and that, I mean there's there's not a definite number yet, but they are reimbursing us for some of the construction that happened here. No, I understand that, but but he's asking, do they have another pot of funds <laughs> to help relocate? A clerk, they're, they're, clerk moving, a, uh, they're moving the, I guess, the family court 100%. Okay. So they're paying for everything on the family court. Okay. And then uh, they said that they would help if, if it come to move the magistrate. Now, when, what I'm listening to here, I, I've already dealt with, uh, it's allied, OJ, allied, oh. not OJ White out. I didn't know. Or Legion, I think it's called. That's one of them. But anyway, I, I just talked to Joe and I walked out there. We're looking at somewhere around $250 an hour for a move because they have so many people in and everything. And we're looking to do all this move in one week. And I, I put this together to where we were going to move the judges, the prosecutor, and the circuit clerk first. And then we were going to go across the street to the magistrate court. And I, I built all this in. I mean, we. So you have a plan. I, I have an estimated of ten to $15,000 what it's going to cost to move. As of packing their boxes, we bought the boxes and give it to them. We're supposed to be packing the boxes as th this was two months ago. Mm -hmm. And I've, I right. delivered some extra boxes to one office so far. So that, that's the plan that, that I put into effect, and this was uh, three months ago. And if we are looking at um, each office to try to pay for the move, it's going to be really hard for me to go back and deal with with what I've already put together, because all I've been doing is moving the move date right now until we can find out exactly. So they're they're holding whenever I'm ready to go. I got, you know, like six guys and however many trucks I need for a week. So you've already been working with the departments? Not to do, well, we've already talked to everybody the very first time, and then they, I thought that what Tom said, that they were supposed to give something in writing on how it was, but this is what I've been doing you know, throughout to, to make this try to, go so smooth for everybody. That's why we put the filing cabinets down there when I talked right, with right. the circuit yeah, court. That's what we were paying. Yeah, Bob, my concern is that you have everything in place. We have the money that we've allocated for the move, and the boxes aren't done. That is what, and I'm starting to get a little concerned because I'm hoping that, that they're starting the process of doing that. My concern is not that the company isn't going to be here ready to go. It's that the company's going to come and all the boxes aren't ready to go. That is my concern, and that's why I'm trying to get a plan so they start now, because if we wait till the last week, it's not going to happen. Everybody that I've talked to said they boxed just about everything that they could at this time that they didn't need to work with. Okay. Until we actually cut a date in stone of when we're going to move, 
um, that's what they said the, the main problem is because I, I keep moving them because of the problems that we're having and, and coming up with and uh, that's just what I've heard so far. Are we able to announce that date since we are going to discuss that? Not when, yet. Not yet. We really need to I thought we were talk. going. Okay. We really do. And that's why I asked the, um, the, uh, the two IT people to come in and we can sit down and see if we can get a plan together and then maybe we can. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I okay, I was under the assumption that we were... I thought we were, I was told we were doing it today, so that's fine, yeah. I'm glad you told me ahead of time. I, that's why I had, uh, <laughs> I talked to Diane to, uh, because the email she sent out, so everybody knows, it said that that was a tentative date, yes. in capital letters, and I've had three phone calls yesterday and an email from Fletch Eck and Supreme Court saying, so we're moving on the 28th, and that, that was stated in there so clear that that was a tentative date, and we would send something back as a follow-up, so I just want to make sure that everybody who sees this um, uh, telecast or maybe Ben can put it in a newspaper or whatever to make sure everybody knows that we don't have a date cut in stone yet because I, I really don't want to move into a building that's not 100% ready. Right, well, we can't do that. My, my, my concern right now is <coughs> we send request these letters uh, and I don't want, want these letters to be a confusion and create more confusion and more upset and more, well, what are we doing, how are we doing? But, you know, it seems it seems to me like you've already got a plan worked out and you've been working with these departments on, on that. I will touch bases with each one of them and I will have a report next week. Why don't we do, why don't we do that? Okay. Do that we'll hold the letter. That's fine. Um, yeah, I look forward to having our meeting. Let, let, yeah, let him give that's, us a complete report of where they're at. And then, then, then we'll know what further we need to ask. I, I'm just fearful that... Right, that will be more confusion. Right. I, th I thought everything was done. That was, you know, this... Yeah. Uh, I'll wait till after this meeting. I think the biggest question is the <coughs> overtime that only one office has requested and mm -hmm. how that's being paid and how much it's going to cost. Yeah. I mean, are you using the higher paid court security officers or are you using the part-time people that aren't making as much and and I would and rather see the well, I, 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 would, I would rather that too but I don't know how we could force her to hire someone that she doesn't when she wants to hire someone else I mean and and she, she's paying it out of her budget and then she's going to come to us for anything in excess which I'm sure she's going to have to if she's paying the higher paid people Sure, if you had something to add there. One thing comes to mind when we're talking about part time folks, you have to remember also most of those part time folks are retired from somewhere else. Right. So, are they going to be the ones that are going to be able to lift, lift and, and tow? Oh, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean that's what they're being hired for, yes, right, to do the lift and tow. Are they going yeah. to be the ones that, that are going to be able to do that on a, on a regular basis? So, okay. I think that's why she was looking at probably, and I don't know who they are, I haven't heard any names yet. She's probably looking at some of the younger folks that, that can do that on a continuum, continuum mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. well, I'm sure Perry told you, but our, our motion include the proviso that uh, she works out the situation, uh, works out the whole program with you. Right. Yeah, so. yeah and, and I would appreciate that. At least I'll know who. Right, it's you'll know what's yes. going on. Right. Working at what hours. But, that, but that was part of the motion to grant her to allow, allow her to do that. Right. Was it, she worked weeks, out and all the details out to the gym. <laughs> 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 and, uh, is that is that meeting this afternoon, Bobby? Right after this, we're gonna have a start before you go session. to your okay. Oh, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Okay, I'll hold off a new business. If there's is Tom, there any... yeah, Tom is. <clears throat> we can go now back to uh, item number eight. Consider adoption by the commission an amendment to the reimbursement resolution, which was previously adopted by the county commission for project plan number one. Come on down. How are you doing today? Hey, good morning. How's good morning. Everyone? Good. Good. I've been instructed to move the microphone over a little closer to me. Okay. Trying to do that. You're so soft. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so uh, this, you might remember that we had a, a reimbursement resolution in place for the property TIF bonds mm -hmm. at uh, University Town Center. 
Um, the county commission issued uh, approximately four and a half million dollars of bonds for the infrastructure portion of the project. So that's the road extension, water and sewer work over in the east side, the existing development area. Um, those bonds were uh, placed with the developer. Uh, it was primarily set up as a means of reimbursement to the developer for costs that they were going to incur to uh, complete that construction work. Um, that construction work is ongoing, mm -hmm. and the funding that's currently available from the bonds is not sufficient to pay all those costs. Um, the developer is going to go ahead and move forward uh, with their own private funds to complete the work, pay for those costs, but they would like to have the ability um, that if the commission issues additional property tax bonds uh, with respect to the project, to have the ability to reimburse themselves for those additional costs. Uh, the existing reimbursement resolution, um, you have to name in there the sources of funding that they're going to use to pay those costs, mm -hmm. and those funding sources have changed for them. Uh, so that's one reason we need to amend the resolution to name their other uh, source of funding uh, that they could pay these costs from. Uh, and then also, uh, the existing resolution provided for 20, a maximum amount of $20 million in property TIF bonds, and that's essentially for the whole development. And that's probably not sufficient at this point uh, to cover everything that we're looking at, including the west side. Um, so I am recommending that we amend the existing resolution to name this additional account that they would pay these costs from and to increase the maximum bonding capacity from the $20 million to the $40 million. Move to approve the resolution of the County Commission of Montague County amending its prior declaration of official intent to reimburse expenditures made from proceeds or bonds or other obligations. Second. Been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. That's Great. all I've got for you. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Thank you very much. We'll just wait a second. Thank you, Tom, for coming. Okay. New business. Do we have revisions to the coal severance fund, which is not a positive situation? Yes, unfortunately, uh, the coal severance fund is dwindling year after year. Uh, this year, uh, we came in $180,000 short. So I had to take several categories from the coal severance budget, move them into general county fund. Um, of those, we're moving uh, dog wardens, which was appropriations for um, NSNAP and um, animal friends. Mental health, that's Valley, the mental hygiene exp um, expenses and uh, mental hygiene association. Other health is health right and fairs and festivals. Those are all being rolled over into general county fund. Okay. Uh, then in general county fund, I had to come up with that $180,000. And I had to move money from capital projects, which we will definitely put that back when we know what the carryover is for General County. Um, so I had to take those amounts, fit them into General County budget. So that's what I've done. You took it all from capital projects? Yes. Yes. Move to approve the. Be ready. Was there anything else? Uh, there was also two um, Meals on Wheels was increased because they had come in and talked to you and you agreed right. to them. Right, we increase And that. the Morgantown Pony League, they did not get that $5,000 that they were promised the previous fiscal year. So basically you've committed to 15. They only received 10 last year, so I put 5000 okay. in there. Okay. And that's all of them. Move to approve the budget adjustment. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 It passes. I thank you. I just wonder what those other counties are going to be doing of how they're going to be able to make up the loss of revenues. I know some of them they're just not, are unable to do it. So we're real fortunate. We're still very fortunate we're able to come up with the difference at this time. Other new business? And the other item that I have is the application and certificate for payment on the Justice Center. Current payment due is $622,648,000. 
Uh, we have a remaining balance on the project of one million eighty-six thousand four forty-three sixty-four, and eight hundred and seventy-nine thousand of that is retained that they won't get until the project is completely done and accepted. We need a motion to approve that. Yes. Move to approve the payment. Second. It's improperly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passes. Do we have any other new business? <coughs> no. Okay. Uh, if you all don't have any, then we'll go down to reports from elected officials. I see several elected officials here. Did anyone like to say anything? Sheriff? Well, the you got the gun. <laughs> Just one thing real quick. I know that you all know that, that we're pretty busy in the sheriff's office and stuff, but we uh, got a couple of weeks ago our statistics from 911, and just to let you know, uh, calls for service that we handled in the fiscal year last year were uh, 32,788 calls. So that's a lot of calls for service, as, as you all know. Uh, but uh, we continue to be busy. Those numbers fluctuate very little uh, over the years. You know, over the last uh, five years, they've stayed at about that range, uh, fluctuating from 32 to 35,000 uh, calls for service. So just uh, just wanted you all to know that, that that's that's pretty busy. Okay, thank you. Assessor? I want to hand something out. Uh, Monday, the state was up, and they've been doing, since April, uh, our monitoring. They do each year. And Monday was the exit conference to go over their findings of what was. And as you can see, on the left-hand side there, we actually passed every category. So I want to inform you was I think it's the first time the county's passed there in since 2004, 11, 12 years. And we've been able to do that. Your mapping part we passed in October. Mm -hmm. So your sales ratios at the bottom, which we just passed here a few months ago. From that. Then what they do is they come in and they'll just take samples and do about 50. And they'll go out to the field, view what we have on our records, they'll match it up, see if it's correct, incorrect, if we miss anything. Uh, review all the studies that we do to make sure there's going to be sales chasing going on and that they're accurate from what they're supposed to be. So we had that, and it's you know as you can see, it's a it's a great turnout to be able to pass everything. So technically, we've passed everything that they've uh, done the monitoring on since October. So in the last nine months, we've passed all three major categories. So we going to be able to present that and share that here. That's that. okay. excellent work. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, well, so please pass on our praises to all your staff. Yes, they deserve all the credit. One question. So. Uh, you're soon to go uh, online with GIS mapping now? Uh, we're still, yeah. Uh, we've met with Atlas. They've got some things that are just working out there and working on the license and the server. Yes. That's where we're at right now. So I'm hoping within a month. That we'll be Very able good. to have that. Uh, well, online filing for personal property, I think we're close to about 4,000 now that have accessed that. So that's still going well. Our satellite in Morton High last Wednesday was about 52 that showed up for that. So that's our first time we're hosting it there. So. And we're grand bill today at 3. So that will continue to go. Thank you. Great. There was one other thing I just needed to add. One more. Kelly told me one more thing. Where's Jambi when you need it? Yeah. Um, the tax bills were mailed out today. Uh, we had nearly 90,000 uh, tax bills <coughs> mailed out. So those, uh, those are out, and hope that everybody starts back. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mayor, did you want to say anything? Okay. Uh, reports from... <laughs> you've, been, you've been shut up, right? <laughs> reports of county uh, commission... Ed, you want to go first? Uh, I would like to report that uh, we concluded 4-H camp, younger camp, at a record 155 children attending 4-H uh, camp last Friday. Uh, 132 in the older camp, which was three weeks. I worked that camp. That's why I wasn't present at commission for that particular meeting. And uh, really, fairs are coming up. Uh, I hope to see everybody at Wadestown on Tuesday for the first fair parade and then our Montgomery County Fair Parade the week after Monday. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Welcome back. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've been uh, at the National Association of Counties. Uh, National Association of Counties uh, consists of uh, 3,000 
69 counties, parishes, different states call different things, parishes, townships, counties. That's how many there are in the United States, 3,069. We had a estimated 4,000 people there. Uh, West Virginia was the most, uh, the, had the most representation there uh, that anyone remembers. We had, we had four, 40 people participate, had 20, 29 delegate votes on various resolutions. They also had a lot of training opportunities, many that I will report on the future. I just got back at 10 o'clock last night. I drove down and drove back. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the big focus is transportation uh, throughout the United mm -hmm. States. Transportation, a major problem throughout the United States. And even in our state, there's some counties that transportation is a, uh, is a major problem and deterrent to uh, economic development, health and safety, and so many other factors, as Montague County is fully aware that we have uh, transportation issues. We had extensive, and I tried to attend every one of those. There's three categories. There's all kind of categories, tracks you could focus on, and I'll report in the future. But my, my uh, three tracks that, that I focused on was transportation, uh, workforce, mm -hmm. the new workforce, uh, 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 WIA, new law, the revisions in that, and the responsibilities, which I will be briefing the county commissioners, not only here, but throughout the state, uh, on the um, obligation that is placed on county commissions, commissioners. A lot of commissioners are not aware of this, this new thing where the money that's spended for developing the workforce and labor rests with county commissions. Now, I've represented this commission on workforce uh, 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 local elected officials, and I was on the investment board, and it's now on the workforce investment board, but workforce key to uh, working through county commissioners in terms of federal laws recognize that the county commission is key to developing the workforce. So I'll, I'll give a more thorough report on that. In the, in the third uh, uh, category I focused on was economic development and different things that were being done on economic development. Uh, an interesting thing I'll bring in some ideas and concepts on is that many of the uh, many of the counties have chose to go to public-private partnerships. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, ball, the ballpark is a prime example of a public-public partnership. And I can see the possibilities in certain municipalities even, and I'm looking at the mayor of Westover right now, where we could do public-public-private partnerships and where we could work together on tasks. That, I would say, was the overall theme, was that this, the economic problems, the labor force, the economic problems, the transportation rest in the counties. And uh, it was funny, the, the, the Secretary of Transportation, um, Ran, Randy, Randy Fox, I think his name, first name's Randy. Well, anyway, Secretary Fox, he was the former mayor of Charlotte. And he gave quite a stirring speech on transportation. And one, I don't know if he, he in answering some questions, uh, but I thought it was a, I thought it was funny, funny line. <coughs> he he made the point that that if the if a lot of the states would get out of the way and let the counties uh, participate more in the federal programs, they thought they'd be more efficient from the federal da standpoint mm -hmm. because because. Uh, the county, in all reality, you got to be truthful about it. The counties is where government is real. It affects every day of life. That's when you really produce. We don't, we're not, we don't get hung up on abortion or gay marriage or any of those policy philosophy things. That's at the, that's at the higher level. We, we determine whether you could get to, from A to B to work, whether you have a good place to work, whether you have a place to take your children to uh, church, to recreation. All those 
human life things are what counties do. So that's what the, the entire focus of this, and I appreciate the, the commission uh, sending me to represent this commission, uh, and uh, I will give you much, I'll give you much thorough reports, and I'll also be able to give each of you in different areas, there was even uh, uh, an area on various ideas to deal with recycling. Uh, <laughs> but I, with, with all this, uh, I'll also be able to give you links that you'll okay. be able to right. connect and, and hear what took place and, and what, the, what our position at NACO is. Thank you. Well, thank you. Look forward to hearing that. I, I think that's, that's great to have some outside so we don't keep reinventing the wheel. Right. Um, anything else? That, that, well, what, uh, I'll deal with it later. I, I okay. haven't been back long enough, and, and I, I read the quick thing uh, uh, about the I'll, I'll bring it up later. Okay. I think it might be one that I might be bringing up. Um, about the dog? No. Okay. Oh, if you're going to bring it up, then yeah, I'll Yes, I was good. Well, go, ahead, go ahead and address bring it. Bring it up. Okay. Uh, I just saw in the paper where there was some question and concern that we were held on them hostage, or I forget the exact words, that um, a council member from uh, Granville stated. And, and what I'd like to do, with your permission, is invite them to come over to the Montague County Dog Pound and take a look at what we do um, and have them understand that, you know, we're, we're trying to be as fair as possible. We're just, we're making them pay for what the cost is and that I just felt the words were not appropriate, but I'm, I'm more than willing if the other two want to, if the Star City and Granville want to set up, make up their own. Well, <laughs> let, let, let me, let me, let me go ahead and address this. I, I, <laughs> at being on the road and everything, I thought, well, let me think about it a little bit more because I just saw it. Yeah, and we I, saw it today. Fi I was five days behind in the paper, so I don't know what else took place in the paper. Sorry about that. Uh, but I saw that, and I just shook my head. I mean, we had those intergovernmental meetings, and, and the mayor can attest to that, and we went over this repeatedly. I even prepared an email, which I'd be happy to share with uh, Ben and the other news media here, to explain the situation. We have no power to enforce town ordinances. County ordinances do not exist inside the town. Now, the sheriff, and people point to the sheriff, well, the sheriff is a constitutional officer. It's a different, it's, it's a, the sheriffs of this, in every county, are charged to enforce the state law. When the sheriff enforces laws with inside a municipality, they're enforcing the state law. They do not enforce town ordinances. There is no county ordinance on leash laws for the for us to send someone in a municipality and pick up a dog we have no legal right and we are actually liable to that owner and could be sued mm -hmm. for picking up that dog because we have no jurisdiction when a town <coughs> is informed uh, formed and they adopt a charter it's approved in the legislature. They accept themselves from county. Now, do we provide s services to them? Yeah, we provide, we provide the, the circuit clerks, the circuit clerk facilities, we provide the magistrates to, for those <coughs> laws, we provide uh, the, uh, the assessment process, we do all that. They don't pay for any of that. They don't pay for, for the assessor, we do that. Uh, the, the sheriff, of course, the sheriff, but the sheriff also has the tax department. They collect the taxes and send it. They don't have to collect the taxes. It's, the towns don't pay for any of that. Those are the those are the obligations of basic government that that we provide the municipalities free of charge, without charge. Now, do the people pay for it? Yes, they pay for it in paying their portion of the county taxes. The very we're not forcing anyone to do anything. They're going to put pressure on us. Hey, forget it. Let's just drop it. Now, Westover, we could continue to have an intergovernmental agreement with Westover and with Morgantown. 
let Star City of Granville go, go do their own thing. Mm -hmm. Let them spend $150,000 a year. Go do, we, we did, we're doing this as a service, and we're doing it at a fraction of the cost. A fraction of the cost. So to classify this as a ripoff, it, it, it's not only naive, but, but it's sad that you got to turn into a personal attack into a logical discussion, which we had with all the council with all the council members and mayors who were in attendance over a period of months. I mean, this has been discussed over a period of months. Right. The reality is that when we send our people into a town to enforce an ordinance. We are accepting that that ordinance is constitutional. It is legally and properly enforced. We are taking responsibility for that animal and deal, dealing with one of their citizens under their town ordinance, because there is no county ordinances in a town whatsoever. It stops at the town line. We're assuming all the risk of caring for those animals, of protecting those animals, of returning those animals. We accept all the liability and risk, which are insurance. We pay insurance on all that to cover, to cover anything that may go wrong or that's improper. My opinion is, look, you don't have to do us any favors. Don't sign the agreement. We'll be happy to turn it over to you. You spend your seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars a year instead of sixty-eight hundred dollars a year to hire a game warden to add all these responsibilities to your insurance. We we worked out a program that was extremely fair and I think extremely generous. And I, I would like the mayor to, to speak to this if he would, uh, and the sheriff as well. Extremely generous. And then to be called names and, and uh, attacks on us when we, we, we only charge them for 11 months instead of 12 months. On top of giving them a <laughs> huge reduce, we only charge for 11 months. We don't charge for 12 months. We've done it, but there's no other way to do it without... And I don't care what was done in the past because it was illegal then and lucky the county didn't lose big money then. Without an intergovernmental agreement, right. our people, uh, we, have no jurisdiction to enforce any county ordinance or any city ordinance inside the town. So I came back and I read that in the paper and I was like, what else happened in the last four or five days? So I'm not anxious to go home and <laughs> read the other four or five papers. But, but. I'm trying to be fair. Uh, I'm trying to be fair to the towns. I think we've been extremely fair. Uh, our, our people are, are taking uh, a big risk by going in in uh, the towns anyway, uh, for all the reasons I stated. Right. I want to continue it because I think it's extremely fair. But I'd like to hear if the mayor has anything to add to that. It's, it's, it's interesting that you said because you pretty much read my mind or what I was going to say about it if I had the opportunity. You know, when we first approached this, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but a few people and a few council people thought that um, they, they didn't say the word, but felt, you know, it was almost like they were being extorted to, to, to enter into this agreement, but they didn't understand. And that's the problem with everything in life. If you don't have the proper information, you don't get it, you don't know what's going on. So when, when I explained to them about the agreement and how that covered everybody, and the, you know that there were some sour grapes there, and I'm obviously from the paper, the article in the paper, there still are some sour. But they don't understand the process. They don't understand because a lot of them say, "Well, they always came and picked our dogs up. They always came and did this, and they came and did that. They thought their tax money was actually paying that." And I said, "Well, yeah, you're right in a, in a sense, but these people aren't city employees. They don't, you know, they're coming into our city and doing something. We need an agreement to allow that to happen." And they didn't quite understand that until we, you know, until we talked about it in, in, in that fashion. And, you know, and like Bobby and I have talked about a couple of times, you know, the alternative is just not anything that's feasible for anybody to do. You know, we're going to get our own setup, do our own dogs. I mean, why would we even consider doing something like that? Anybody that, you know, if, if, if a city has enough money to do that, 
and they're probably not providing better services somewhere else. You know, that's just that's uh, that's the way it is. I mean, you know, we're satisfied with it. Would we prefer not to pay it? Well, who would? <laughs> I mean, come on, let's be real. You know? But it's a good service, and it, it, you know, we're you, the way you guys have laid it out in the agreement and the meetings and, and everything that we've been to it. And I know that uh, people from other cities were at the inter inter uh, governmental meetings, and they, it was explained to them. Right. You know, and I'm definitely not the sharpest knife in the drawer. If I got it, then we know that. shame on them. Thank you. I've a lot of trouble. I can tell. <laughs> but we're we're happy with it, and we we think it works fine. Uh, you know, I had a question a few weeks ago that. That we didn't, they didn't respond to just you know, because we've got Nuisance some people yeah. that'll just call all the time and say, well that dog's barking over there. Well that's our problem. If the dog is barking, you know, the dog's running loose or something like that. Right. You guys respond to. It. We had noise, noise ordinances, nuisance ordinances, so we you know we respond to that ourselves. But uh, all in all, it's worked out fine for us. And you know, you know it, it's it all goes back to leadership. You know, in every step of the way, even like you said before about the. Uh, the federal government, like the, the mayor from somewhere in North Carolina you mentioned, you know, that's, they, they, when you get a federal grant, the state is the administrator. Well, you know, we, we have been waiting for almost a year and a half now for a notice to proceed on another phase of our sidewalk project. If that was being administered by you guys, it would have been. and I'm not, I'm not patting you guys on the back, but I do because you guys do a good job, but you're here. Right. You know, you're not down in Charleston. That's exactly you know, what I'm saying. Here, you, you, the, the yeah. county should administrate should, should administrate this money from the federal government. It, it work it works a whole lot better. You should have county rule, and you should guys you guys should uh, administer administer the, uh, the the federal grants. The state doesn't have the ability to do it. Yeah. Right. And you know, you get you get put on the bottom of the list for whatever reason. I can name a thousand reasons that that we've had to wait on a lot of things because. But the biggest problem is they're not there. They don't see what goes on. They don't, you know, they don't quite understand because it's a statewide thing. So that part of the thing is essentially. And that's the, th the advantage of going to these kind of meetings because you can see the same problems <laughs> exist in the other 49 states. Right. The same exact problems. He, he was the mayor of Charlotte, Anthony Fox. I remember his name now. He was the mayor of Charlotte. Now he's the secretary of transportation. So he's got to see it at both levels. Uh, and he was active in NACO, he said, when he was, uh, uh, was uh, worked for the counties. Uh, but he, he sees it at both level. And it, it, what you just talked about that's happened in real life in Westover was exactly what he's referring to. Mm -hmm. it, should, it should go through the counties, they say, rather than through the state bureaucracy that gets everything bogged down and nothing gets done for ages. Well, you know, if you've got an electrical problem, you don't call a plumber. <laughs> yeah. That's been my problem. That's been my problem. Oh, no. oh. Nice right. I wasn't going to get at it, but it opened the door, okay. so I addressed it. Um, yeah. No, I, I think, and I, and I think we want to get clear that we want to have a symbiotic relationship with the cities, and, and that's really, really important. Uh, I also did want to say that I, I also don't think Granville, the new people, understand that. We have a TIF district there that we have gone on a limb for, and Granville is benefiting very well and nicely from that well, you know, development. I don't know who said this or made yeah. this comment. It may be somebody new that hasn't yeah. had the, the, the advantage right. of being to some of the governmental meetings we've had. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what I'm case, saying. Then they probably don't understand the full exactly and that's why you know I look forward you know if they want to call us or if they want to you know what we're at our next meeting we can provide that information too if that's what we want but you know we're trying to keep a, a positive symbiotic relationship speaking of that I received a phone call from Judge Claudges who had some questions and suggestions about the County Judicial Building and I said I would pass them on to the three of you at a work session so I did want that public to know that I did receive the phone call and I will talk with you about the suggestions that were brought up. Um, also, I, hand, I just handed you a list, and I give to Janet and you all. This is a list in the last, as you know, we've been monitoring. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there it is. Uh, the, in the last 36 hours, since uh, the state had said that they had done 90% of the patching of all the primary roads, that these were calls that I've received or from Facebook, you know, in the last 48 hours. And with, and I'm planning to, Colleen, I want to thank Colleen for putting it in English, of the road and the comment. 
and just submit to Ray Earth and the State Department saying, here are concerns again. We hope that you can look at these and many of these roads are, are the same that you've seen in some. And to be honest with you, I didn't even know existed that there were such names of roads. I kept saying there's a Hawkins Run road down there. Just and, Hawkins Road. Yeah, Hawkins Road. And I, run. Yes. And I just like the comment. The quote was, Dominion Post called it undrivable. I just like that. But there's different comments and suggestions. And the one that does concern me immediately that we're adding on is someone called from Route 100 to Fort Martin Road. Poles and lines are fully in the road and starting to fall in and down. And so those are the kind of things that maybe they aren't aware of. So well, we're going to... Let's make it clear that I don't live on Hawkins You don't Road. live on... That's right. You don't <laughs> live, live on, on Hawkins Road. I live on Mill Road, and it's not on here. Yeah. It was... Not, yeah. No. No. <laughs> so, again, Other side of the family. it was just interesting to see, you know, the different areas and the suggestions and comments. So we'll submit this and hopefully, you know, they'll be able to get to many of these roads. And, you know, I just wanted you to have a list. So if someone calls, you can at least see what the list is. I gave it to Colleen. So in case they call the county commission office, she'll have her list right there to say, yes, it's on the list. But again, I just wanted you aware of it. Um, besides that, that is... Um, that is it. Um, I know we are going uh, at 1.30 to, to meet with the governor to watch the opening, grand opening of the National Guard Readiness Center. Center. And as you saw, we are able to use the access road for the, today. So we'll be getting an idea of how that access road is going to be for the future of Montague County. So there's a lot of positive things going on, a lot of good things going on there. I can tell you this, there is a meeting tomorrow, which I'm sure you're aware of. The, um, 3.30 the, tomorrow. At, and that's one, but exactly, with the State Development Authority and the developers, and we're going to be there and answer any questions. And, and I think it's a very positive meeting that I think we've got a lot of movement, and hopefully we'll hear by Friday, and that's what we'll find out. Anything else? With that being said, I'd like to request a motion to go into executive session under 69A-4, Section 9. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. I also request that administrative personnel be in on that, and I call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 It passes. We're in executive session right now. Okay, do I have a motion to, go to come out move, of executive move, session? Come out of executive session. Second. It's been properly moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do I have a motion for adjournment? Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, it's been properly moved and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, we're out of here. <laughs>